This episode of Tech News Weekly is brought to you by Braintree. If you're working on a mobile app and searching for a simple payment solution, check out Braintree. With one simple integration, you can offer your customers every way to pay, period. To learn more and for your first $50,000 in transactions fee-free, go to braintreepayments.com slash TNW. Starting Tech News Weekly in 3, 2, 1... Everybody, welcome to Tech News Weekly. I'm your host, Andrew Sarah, and of course, I'm joined by Mr. John Bob. How you doing, John? Hey, Andrew. How's it going? Uh, pretty good. Counting down the days. It's almost Christmas. You stole Time's that from up. Paul Throt again. What did I steal from him? Pretty good. Pretty good. I mean, listen, I'm doing pretty good today. I'm not doing great. <laughs> I'm never doing great. Doing just pretty good today. Counting down the days, uh. ordering stuff, spending money, buying things for people. It's a wonderful yep. time to, to blow through your savings. Oh, absolutely. You know? <laughs> and then now, like, I'm buying a bunch of crap that I don't really need. Um, I Why wanna, do it? Yeah, I want to talk about... Actually, I want to talk about... You, you have some impulse issues. I do have impulse issues, and I want to talk about my Samsung experience that I discussed. And I did actually end up ordering a different VR head unit. And I have to tell you, none of these are worth a dime because they don't work. I'm going to talk about that and a lot of other things. We have a lot to talk about today. But before we do that, I want to thank our sponsor, and that's Braintree, a PayPal company. Now, guys, you've heard me talk about Braintree for about a year now here on the network. Why Braintree is so good, uh, what they do. They allow you, it's a mobile payment service, where they allow you to accept all different types of currency, all different types of payment methods with just one uh, one piece of code, You know, a couple lines of code here and there. It's all integrated in this one unit. Now, the thing about Braintree, and I'm going to tell you guys a story about a friend of mine. Uh, this guy, Lewis, works at Press. Uh, became friends with him. He was telling me about the, his idea that he had for, um, he has this business that he's coming up with. And he integrated Braintree to accept payments. And he absolutely loves it. The thing is going great for him. Why? The first $50,000 in transactions are fee-free. So it's no risk. It, there's really no risk whatsoever with this. Braintreepayments.com slash TNW. Go sign up. Get your first $50,000 in transaction fees uh, completely for free. They don't charge you a dime for it. Uh, companies like Hotel Tonight, Living Social, the list goes on and on Uber. They all use Braintree for mobile payments. So uh, check them out. Braintreepayments.com slash TNW. I want to thank them for supporting the show. Of course, supporting JFK uh, Network in general. So what's going on, John? What do you mean, what's going on? What's going on, just in general? How's life? Um, I don't know how to answer that. <laughs> it's a horrible question? Is that what you're saying? Why, why would you ask me that? I'm asking how you're doing. That's all. <laughs> so, uh, this holiday, it seems like a lot of these Sony VRs are the big thing. These uh, not so, I keep calling them Sony VR. I don't know VR why. headsets. The VR headsets are seem to be the hottest item this year. Uh, I last don't year, understand why. Well, you know what it was why? last year was a selfie stick. If you remember that, everybody was getting a selfie stick. No, uh, they weren't. Everybody was. It was a hot selling item. And then plus, you know what else? Those yeah, that's because you bought one for a Paul. I bought one for Paul, but I also saw a lot. I, you know what I'd go based on those Amazon. Uh, whenever someone buys something using our Amazon link. Uh, gfk.co slash Amazon. We get a little kickback from that. But I get a list. I don't know who's buying what, but I see things that are purchased. And this year, it's all about these VR headsets. Last year, it was a bunch of these Bluetooth, uh, those Bluetooth like um, buttons that you could take to snap a photo. Like if you don't mm -hmm. want to just like hit the button, which that kind of makes sense. Um, I used... The, the the Samsung VR headset that my friend had, and it was mind blowing. It was so good because it's using the Oscillate Riff uh, software. I just ordered this other one today. Uh, some you know it was like thirty forty bucks. This plastic thing, I you it's the worst thing in the world. Everything is blurry. Nothing looks good. It's <laughs> terrible to navigate. I don't even know why anybody would get this thing. It made no sense to me. 
Well, that's what you get. I mean, I don't. The, the technology that's out there for virtual reality stuff, I don't think is there yet. No, it's I not. I mean, at this point, it's still all very novel. I, I think I mean, the Oslo Rift stuff my, is cool. This is just my opinion. Well, I think the Oslo Rift stuff is cool. I think the fact Oculus, that... Oculus, you mean? Oculus, yeah. Oculus. What did I call Oculus? Oculus. Oculus. Um, that stuff is cool. And it, it works well. It works well with Samsung because they've integrated in the hardware that you're buying. You're not just buying like a dummy piece. It knows to use the software. Uh, with all the other ones, all those other VR units that are, you know, 50 bucks, 40 bucks, they don't look good at all. I should have just gotten that the Google Cardboard one for $20 because that at least it scans it in. You scan it in with your phone so it knows what you're connected to. And I've yeah. heard those look pretty good. I was shocked how terrible this looked, and I actually ended up paying more for it. Why? Because I didn't want the cardboard one. Oh, I wanted, I wanted like, you know... One that was like a little bit better, but I was off. I was totally off. I just don't understand why anybody would even buy one of these to begin with. Pornography. <laughs> <laughs> That's still very bizarre. Uh, sporting like, events. How, like, how, I want to watch content is out there in VR. Well, what they're going to be doing like this year, the Super Bowl, you're going to have the option with the Super Bowl to, to pick a seat. And you could either pick like nosebleeds or whatever, and you're going to be able to see like around you, and you're going to be able to watch the game. I think that that's cool. The novelty of being front row at an event is cool. The, uh, the novelty of being front row at a concert is pretty cool. Yeah. You know what I mean? You you don't, you wouldn't go. I mean, your your favorite band is performing, and you have this option to be front row. You put this thing on, and you could see everything that's happening around you, and getting you know the audio from it. I think that's an awesome thing. It's 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 still a novelty. Of course, it's, it's, it's still all a not novelty. replacing the experience. No, it's never going to replace it's it. But novel, I, I do think but it's neat. I do think it's neat. I, I'm actually a fan of it. And it, if you it, ask it's me, one of those things no. where you're gonna you know try it once, maybe twice, and then you're gonna put this thing on a shelf and never use it again. That that's what's gonna end up happening. Yeah, I guess. I mean, I don't know. I, I, I'm, I'm so now. I've, I've ordered. I've canceled this order from Samsung, and now I'm waiting for Amazon to get it. So once Amazon gets it, I'll get it. I'm gonna return this other one because it's a total. By piece the way, of crap. can I tell you how pissed off I am with customer service for most companies these days? They're horrible. It's horrible. Unless you order it on Amazon. Yes, Amazon is the only company that I've had good customer service from lately, and it's ridiculous. Like. I'm just about fed up with with some of these companies. The fact that you can't even call in and they don't have a prompt to reach a human. Like, what's the point of having a toll free number if you don't even offer a prompt to reach somebody for help? Well, the problem but is their entire yeah. system is automated. Well, I, I'll give you an example. I mean, I had that problem with Samsung. I was on the phone for like three and a half hours with them. You know, like that's insane to be on hold and they have an online service. They have an online technical support, but they can't do a item lookup to check the status of an order. Like it's it's actually bizarre. These people are, that, that run these companies are absolutely ridiculous and completely stupid. I've had issues this entire past two weeks with Macy's. And so you call into Macy's toll free number. And there is literally no prompt to talk to somebody. Everything you get is automated. Yeah, you can look some stuff up, but if you need to talk to somebody, well, then you have to, you know, mash a bunch of buttons on your phone and hopefully get put over to the, the other system. Yeah. And then once you do that, you get somebody in India who can't even help you. Yeah. It, it's I mean, tricky. Look, the fact uh, is listen, I that's why Amazon order. Well, that's why Amazon is kicking everybody's butt. You know, we're, we're, people are laughing when they see those drones and stuff. And it's 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 a great example of that. I mean, they're, they're doing they're working on all these different methods of getting you to delivery that you want. I could have I could have something delivered in six hours. That's insane. I live in New York. Yeah, but I mean, it's it, listen, we're a larger city. And That's it's a good never going to happen nationwide ever. You don't think so? We'll get no. to the point that you can get something the same day. No, no. look, know, the John. fact is that we can't even have. High-speed internet in rural areas still. 
Yeah, I guess you're right. Listen, good thing I live in New York. And I can get whatever I want. Uh, John, you know, you want- I wanted, yeah. I, all I wanted to do was cancel a damn order on Macy's. And apparently you can't do that after 30 minutes. After 30 minutes, it is impossible for them to cancel an order. Literally impossible. That's everybody. What can I tell you? Like, how is that possible? You haven't even shipped it yet. Well, I'll, you know, I'll give you another. I'll give you an example. I had j- the same issue happened with just last year with Macy's, where she ordered a bunch of stuff. She got a bunch of boxes. She looked at the receipt, saw that the stuff was, you know, there. When she opened the box, there was half the stuff was missing because it was back ordered. They only, they only list stuff that you ordered, not stuff that's back ordered. So it doesn't matter what arrived and what didn't arrive. I will never order from Macy's ever again. Well, that was such a I, horrible I, experience, and I'm still waiting for my damn refund. You're gonna be waiting I sent a couple this stuff more days. Back two days ago, and I still don't have a refund. You're gonna be waiting a couple more days. I mean, it's ridiculous. At this point, I'm I'm ready to say, all right, this is an unauthorized purchase. Uh, screw it. Yeah. You deal with it. Hey, John. Why don't we go into a story? Something yes. a little happier. Go into something. <laughs> Uh, so let's talk about uh, some Apple rumors. There's been a bunch of rumors this week. One of them has been that Apple's long rumored TV streaming service is being reportedly put on hold. This is that TV service that's going to be like a package of around 14 different TV channels that they're going to charge maybe 30 or $40 for a subscription. Yeah. According to CBS's president, Les Moonves, he's claiming that, that Apple has put their plans for the streaming service on hold. Well, yeah, does Apple, for Apple TV, is this something that they're going to be able to do well with? Like, seriously, like the fact that... Yes. I mean, we'll look at it. This is one of the things that was rumored that Apple wanted to launch. And, there, and it, it was going to be like 40 channels. time frame as when they launched the new hardware for the Apple TV. Yeah, and it was going to be like Apparently 40 they channels, still right? negotiating with all the, the companies out there to get them on board with this. It, it, but it, it wasn't going to be a lot of content. Do this. You're not talking about like a lot. Of, you're, it was going to be 30 to 40 bucks a month. I mean, that was the rumor. But you weren't getting, you know, hundreds of channels. Yeah, you were going to get maybe 14, 15 channels. 14, 15 At least channels. that was what was rumored. Yeah. Um, I, maybe, maybe they realize logistically people aren't going to be paying for that. You know, now we have different services. Uh, Time Warner Cable just released their online streaming service that's... A little bit better than this. I think it's like twenty four bucks, and you're paying, you're getting, you know, forty channels or whatever it is. So maybe they have to re-strategize their entire concept of what they're offering for how much. It, it seems like most TV networks aren't interested in doing this, other than maybe some of the the bigger ones, the the subscription ones like Showtime and Stars. Because if you look, Amazon this week also announced that they're doing a standalone add on subscription service. If you're a Prime member, the service is launching with 30 different content collections for Amazon Prime customers. And you get to pick and choose from uh, two big name networks such as Showtime and Stars. But then they have about 28 other networks that are much, much smaller. And you add this on for a certain price, ranging between $2.99 and I think $13.99. I don't know, John. You know, like I have cable. I I, I still have my cable service. I, I am going to start cutting channels out because I'm not watching 90% of the content on there. I actually haven't turned my TV on in two days to watch cable. All I've done is watch, you know, Amazon or Hulu or Netflix or something, a service like that. But if you have basic cable, just you get the basics mm-hmm. and you have Internet. I I think that's good enough for most people. You got Hulu. For you most got, people, that probably is. You know, Hulu's been totally. I, I used to never use Hulu. The fact that they have commercial free, they have a commercial free version now for eleven ninety nine a month. I use Hulu every single day. Every huh. single day, I'm watching content on Hulu now, and I'm using less less Netflix, surprisingly. So, there for me, that's all I'm doing is Amazon Prime, Hulu, and Netflix. So other networks on this Amazon deal include Acorn TV, um, which is a world-class TV from Britain, Con TV, they make movies, TV shows, and coverage from Comic-Con events, Seinfest, uh, Comedy Central's new stand-up channel, 
Curiosity Stream, Daring Docs, um, Sundance Now Doc Club, a lot of docu documentary channels, Dove Channel, Fear Factory, uh, which is like a horror network, okay. Gaia, which is a yoga, meditation, and documentary channel, mm -hmm. Hoopla Kids, Indie Flick Shorts, Lifetime Movie Club, which I'm sure IS would love. Yeah. Uh, Monsters and Nightmares. Whoa. Nature, Nature Vision. Spooky. Ring TV, which is a boxing channel. Quello Concerts, if you want so, to watch concerts. I, I have Amazon Prime, okay? I'm going to ask you like uh, I'm a layman. I have Amazon Prime. What do I get just from my basic Amazon Prime service? What's that? What do I get? I have Amazon Prime, for example, right? Yeah, that's what I'm. That's what I'm saying. You so, you get you can you can subscribe to those channels that I've listed for a certain amount of money each month. Okay, so if I go to, is it available so, yet, or is this going to be available? It's available now. Okay, so I'm on. I just put the link in the chat room that has a list of all of the networks that okay. are on there and how much they cost per month. Okay, so I'm. For example, go, if you wanted the Smith, Smithoni, Miss, Smithsonian, Smithsonian, excuse me, Earth Channel. Yeah. That's three ninety nine per month. Okay. I mean, I don't know who's going to want to get these channels. Both shows and stars are eight ninety nine per month. Con TV. And it's, it's it's interesting because the way they integrated it is is really cool. It's the fact that the majority of the networks that they offer, I think, are networks that most people are generally not going to be interested in. The majority of those, I, I, you know, in all honesty, I don't care about any of those networks. I'm, I'm going through the list right now. Uh, the only thing that I would maybe care about is their documentary, the Doc Club. Uh, I, I've heard really good stuff for Doc Club because it's, it's, it's Sundance now, but it's Doc. I'm a big fan of documentaries, so uh, Doc Club would be one. Uh, there's another documentary I mean, yeah, one. It, you okay, still fine. have to pay a subscription fee for these channels. Okay, you just yeah. get. <clears throat> excuse me, you get this integrated into your Amazon Prime. My Prime. So, so you're going to just... pay for Prime, which is $99 per year. Then you're going to pay $8.99 per, per month for each of these basic subscriptions. So why, why... Here's a dumb question. Why would I get, Am why would I get Showtime and Stars through Amazon if I could get it through whatever? Are they just like, is this just like a, they're, they're treating it as if it's like a retail source for me to go and buy the content there? Just another marketing tool for them. Just, you know, it's like, oh, you can buy us on Amazon also. Not only do you, can you buy us on Showtime.com. Yeah. Okay. I mean, that kind of makes most sense. Part. I mean, it's all yeah. integrated in, into the Amazon website, which is kind of neat. You don't have to go anywhere else yeah. for so these networks. Here's a question it's all for you. integrated into one website so instead of you having to go to, you know, the Showtime website or going to stars yeah. website or going to the docu club website so i'm gonna i'm gonna give you an example here, okay now. i'm gonna give you an example because your parents are kind of in the same boat as my dad my father uh doesn't have a he doesn't i should actually set him up with a fire tv he doesn't use hulu he doesn't use netflix he could figure it out right i could tell him like this is how you do it and this is how you watch it but he watches cable so mm -hmm. i haven't cut cable for two reasons. One, I want USA, which I watch wrestling on USA that, and I and you know for sporting events. Two, because my dad really enjoys watching his shows, you know, watching Showtime and whatever. So how easy do you think it would be for my father, six years old, uh, to say, you know what? I, I've had this concept of, you know, flipping through channels. I know Channel 500 is uh, USA and Channel 550 is uh, TBS. Now you need to rethink totally on the way that you watch content. How of uh, how much of an inconvenience would it be for someone like my father to say, you know what, I'm cutting the cord. All I'm going to do is watch Netflix and Hulu and Amazon. It's still, it's a pain in the ass. It's not that easy. It, it really depends on the person from what I've gathered. When I've talked to people about cutting the cord, it really does depend on the person. Some people get used to it very easily. Some people have a harder time getting used to the change. I could see how it's a pain in the ass, though. I could see how it could be difficult. You know, like, how about, how about your yeah, father? I mean, Let's well, talk about your dad. It's, 
Uh, does your father your father watches cable, right? Not often. Do he, no. What is he watching? Just Netflix. And if it was up to my my father, he wouldn't have cable. He wouldn't even want it. No. Does he watch Hulu and and does he watch TV at all? He watches um, Netflix for the most part. Okay, so that's interesting, right? The very similar generation, but that's what he that's what he watches. I only have. I can't think of a show that Jessica watches that um, that would not be available online, right? There are ways to, to save. I'm paying almost $300 a month for cable, which is obscene. Mm-hmm. I want to cut back a little bit. So I have to figure out a way to make it convenient for everybody, not just my father. You know, my brother lives with me. Make it convenient for my brother. Make it convenient for my father. Make it convenient for Jessica to all... Find their content on this once you cut it. Because you know what you know what happens? It's everything except for the one thing you want to watch. I wish you, you could have My father loves Doctor packages. Who. What does he do, John? Where you could pick 25, you know, 30 channels that you want to watch for $50 per month. Yeah. That would be great. Yeah, yeah. Give me 50 bucks. Here's 50 channels. Pick $1 a channel. Yes. Okay, I got a Some, question for you. Something to that, that effect. I mean... I want BBC my, America, right? I want BBC America. I want the Discovery Channels. I want... And I'm not talking about pirating, right? Like, if I pirated my stuff, yeah. I could get it. Over-the-air content, you get it. I could watch, you know, Sunday... I could watch football on Sundays. I could watch... Uh, because I don't have the NFL Network, so I'm watching local games anyway. Uh, baseball, maybe it's a little bit of a problem for the Mets, because that's not they don't air locally. Well, no, they do. WPIX. So fine, I can still watch home games here. Uh, pro wrestling would be the only issue because I want to watch uh, USA. So the only channel I need is USA uh, History Channel. Maybe some, maybe a couple other odds. Yeah, and this is what news. I'm saying. There's about yeah. about 25 channels that you could easily pick out and say, all right, here's 25 channels. I'll pay you fifty dollars per month for them. Yeah. That would, that would work great. But at the end of the day, what happens with that is that it's 50. So that, that Time Warner Cable thing that they did, you know it's per unit, per box? I'm not sure what you're so talking about. So Time Warner Cable has like their like a la carte service. Did you see that? I vaguely couple, remember ba- this. A couple months ago. So I was like, yeah. actually, this sounds pretty cool, right? You pay like 25 bucks or 30 bucks, whatever it was. And uh, you got like 20 channels and it was like basic channels, but right. it was still like USA was there. TBS was there. I'm like, oh, maybe I'll do this. The way that it works, it registers it per Roku box because it works with Roku or whatever. Oh, that's kind of lame. Yeah. So it's per Roku box. So that that's their way of getting more money for. Eh, you know what, what that it is? is? Eh, right there. Yeah. For audio listeners, you can't see the gesture that Andrew just yeah. made. Yeah, <laughs> I, I did one of these. Eh. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of lame. That's when they, you know, charge you per outlet. They they for, charge you for per, your house. You know, you, you have you have six outlets, and they yeah. charge you per outlet. Per outlet. So at the end of the day, you're still getting you know screwed. Uh, There are ways around it, guys, and I'm not, you know, there are ways to go around this. I recently discovered a service I'm not going to mention where you could watch, you know, like paper. I think I spoke about it on the air where you could get a true to the source pay-per-view feed. And it comes, you got to do like this whole thing. I think we discussed it one time, right? I don't know what you're talking about. Okay. I think we spoke about this, this way, weird way that you could do it, and it's like the source, <laughs> and you put it into VLC, and you could watch it. It's still lame. Yes. Guys, you know what I want? I just want to I want to, I want to drop all the channels, just get, you know, hook up my, my Roku or hook up my, my Fios box, and then have like a Fios app. I think you can watch Fios on the next box. I still find it hilarious, the fact that they're offering both SD and HD channels. Still. Still. In 2015. Like. We're talking why? about 4K. People why, are going. Why in, do we need 180 channels that are in SD? You know what's scarier? Why is your channel still in SD? Well, you know what's scarier? The fact that we're selling 4K televisions. Tell me what I could watch in 4K without having to sort it out. Like, go, go specifically <laughs> find a 4K thing. 
How many things can I watch? I know QNX Monkey. He's a. Uh, we've had this discussion where um, he actually has suggested ways to get uh, you know, 4K content. This is my problem with 4K content. What do I watch? I buy a 4K TV. All these, all these, uh, these zombies are going to the store buying a 4K TV. Great. What are they watching in 4K? They're watching the freaking Price is Right in SD. <laughs> I went I went to my friend's house. His mother was watching The Price is Right. He bought this beautiful Sony uh, Bravia 4K like you know one of the, like the higher end Sony's? Yeah. This beautiful 60 inch 4K TV. I'm looking at this it's it's a piece of art. The TV itself is a piece of art. I go I walk in. I say hello. I'm not I'm not going to say the last name. Let's just call him uh, Mrs. Uh, Napoli Don. I go, oh, Mrs. Napoli Don, so good to see you. I'm like, what are you watching? She's watching Drew Carey in SD on this 4K TV. <laughs> I wanted to bash my head against the wall. Uh, I don't understand the, the things cable so, companies do. So here, here the, the Amazon has some shows in 4K that are great. Um, I believe my, one of my favorite shows that they just did, The Man in the High Castle, is in 4K. Uh, Netflix has shows in 4K. I know Hulu's going to have four, shows in 4K. You're talking about, let's say, you know, a handful of content. Uh, Blu-ray now this year, I think it's due out now or in a month from now. Blu-ray is going to have 4K content. But for for most people... Uh, it, it's it's not you know who bought a 4K TV? Dara. Dara bought a 4K TV. Okay. And she goes, I'm gonna tell you, Andrew. He's like, she goes, I'm not I'm not happy with this TV. By the way, D- Dara is great at what she does with food. She doesn't really know technology. She goes, right. I, you she, because she asked me what TV to get, and I recommend this 4K TV to her because I knew that mm-hmm. you know in a couple of years it was cheap. It was it was this it was like 700 bucks Vizio great TV. Practically all TVs are 4K TVs these days. Yeah. So if you're gonna if you're buying a TV, guys, I don't even know if I recommend the 4K TV because I know the standard is changing. But it was a good deal, and that's what you wanted, so she got it. But that's what I'm saying. Like all TVs these days, market themselves as 4K TVs. You know what? It I- almost doesn't matter what you buy; it's going to be a 4K ready TV. I had the option to buy a 4K TV. I could have bought a 4K Vizio. Or I could have bought the higher end 1080p Vizio TV. I ended up buying the higher end TV, uh, Vizio because it had more LEDs in the back, and the display mm-hmm. is stunning. The 4K had um, it was like a lower end 4K. You know what I mean? It wasn't like their higher end 4K. I th- this is a year and a half ago. But she goes, the, the display it doesn't look good. She's like, I- I- I'm I'm shocked how shitty this Vizio looks. And I go, what are you watching? She goes, Fox. I go, what channel? Fox Five. Are you on SD or HD? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> How are, do you not know? Are you on, tell you. Are you on 505 or Channel 5? I'm on Channel 5. Put it on 505. It still looks not that great. It doesn't look better than the one in my living room. Yeah, because you're watching 1080p on a 4K TV. Yeah. Not only that, but it we, also depends on on, on, on the, the show, the, the, the hardware the Quam, capabilities of the yeah. network you're watching. The Quam, you know. Yeah, it's a I mean, sharing. There's so much it, that in goes New York, into you're going to have all the best, but in smaller markets, that's not true, John. That's not true because I'll tell you something. Uh, FiOS here in New York was unbelievable when they first came out. If I watched and and, and I'm not talking about H, uh, HD SD feeds, right? You watched, uh, let's say, Channel Five Fox on SD on on Time Warner and on uh and on FiOS. The FiOS feed was so much better. And then you watch HD and you say, oh, my God, this is a humongous difference because what they would do, they weren't sharing the bandwidth amongst the channels. Yeah. All HD is not created equally, boys and girls. This is something that people do not understand. It's not only about 1080p or 1080i or or, or 720p. It, it's not the resolution. It's also the amount of bandwidth that is being allocated to that specific qualm. So you will have four Viacom channels uh, doing, let's say, 15 megabits per second. 
and then they add another two or another one to that to that to that bandwidth, and now they're dropping everything. They've also converted from MPEG two to MPEG four, and that that's been a major problem for Verizon. Verizon quality has slowly degraded. It's well, become they're a problem. Not doing it right. No, because we're in a weird place where they're trying to fit as much as they can on certain bandwidths, on certain channels. I, I, I well, TV looks like still crap. doing it wrong. Why the, why the heck are there two sections for HD channels? Why do I have you know two Fox HD channels? I I can I can tune into two thirty four, which is all HD. I can tune into one thousand two hundred and four, and it's the same channel in HD. No difference whatsoever. Yeah, I don't know why that is, actually. We have that, too. Like, we have channel 1,185. Like you don't need and to do that. Local. I think that th th there's a reason why they do that. They don't do it for you. They do it for, like, some other reason. I was reading about it on DSL Reports. Guys, I'm, I'm to, to, to plug DSL Reports, uh, the show's taking a little bit of a turn, uh, and I want to stick to this topic. Well, it's a slow news week, so. Yeah, but I want to I wanna talk about this because it's heated right now. we got 90 people in the chat right now, and, and people are interested in this discussion. Um and there's many reasons why certain things look better than others. I do not watch on-demand programming through my cable provider anymore because it looks like garbage. There's no, no excuse. Have, they, don't, they, they, they don't have good systems for it. But there's no excuse for that. Number two. Let's, no, there's not. I'm going to give you an example. It's, Scandal. It's, it's, it's part, partly because the, the businesses that operate it don't want to spend money to deliver yeah. programming properly. Um. That's Let's, a lot of it is, is is companies just don't want to invest the money into d the the hardware to do all this stuff correctly. Yeah, um, I'm gonna I'm gonna tell a little story here. We're gonna go down uh, memory lane. When and and guys participate. I, I I love that you guys are talking in the chat right now because I'm getting a lot of good ideas. Uh, when when satellite came out, satellite TV. Do you remember how beautiful this was? Direct TV. I mean, they were standard standard deaf channels, but they were great because there was enough bandwidth being pushed through to the channel. And the conversation was one way. So I was watching um, on Time Warner. I went to my friend's house. I was watching, you know, whatever. It was, it was a channel. It looked like garbage. But I put the sports channel on. I put on a game. The game looked great. It was a CBS game. If you watch sports on the internet, it looks horrible. There's no even though it's 1080p video like the Super Bowl a couple years ago, right? Like I don't know if they did it last year. It could have been last year that they, that they did it. Um, and John has heard me talk about this. But when you're watching sports on the internet, it doesn't work well. It looks like you're watching it on the internet, and it has nothing to do with the resolution. Do you know what it has to do with, John? Bandwidth. Bandwidth. You need a shit ton of bandwidth to make sports look good. Forget about the frame rate. 60 frames a second. 720p, 60. Is a great standard for sports, but there's there's a lot of detail loss the more you compress something. So if you have a video that's 15 megabits per second, you have a lot of decent detail there. If you compress that down to 1.5 or 2 megabits per second, you're compressing that down and you're losing so much detail that the picture just ends up looking like garbage. Yeah. So and this is even more evident when there's a lot of motion. It's the motion. So when there's that a happens. lot of motion, yeah. you're losing so much detail that it just ends up being a blurry mess of a picture. Yeah, so I'll give an example. The WWE Network, right? Um, if it's a major pay-per-view, like a WrestleMania or a Royal Rumble, major pay-per-view, I would pay that $50 a month, $50 to, to watch it on traditional television through the through the cable provider because i'm getting uh you know probably it's i i don't you know what i think it's 1080 they're sending 1080i for their video i don't think i don't know if it's 720 but i think it's 1080 but the bandwidth is 15 megs or 16 megs that's what the cable companies are pushing out for some of these channels pay-per-view is always going to be at the highest bid rate because they're not sharing that pay-per-view uh qualm it looks great, but you watch the WWE Network. They're only pushing it out two to five megabits a second. Five megabits a second is horrible for sports. Yeah. It, I mean, it's brutal. And that's why I have a problem watching baseball. It's, it's football, probably fine anything. if you can if you can deliver it on demand where it's encoded ahead of time. Now, I but will tell you. When it's live, you're just not going to be able to run multiple passes 
of yeah. an encode through the video and get a good picture. You have to do multiple passes in order to compress it and make it look good. Yeah, and now now let me let me just say that the WWE Network has gotten better. I think they have upped their bandwidth a little bit better. Uh, it, it, they they've worked they've worked on this a little bit, but I have to tell you, um, I I have seen. A source of a UFC fight, the source for their their internet service, like they have like their fight pass, you know, like where they 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 could put pay per views and stuff. Um, I have seen a direct source at twenty megabits a second. It looks the unbelievable, better than TV. Yeah, sporting still looks like garbage. But if I'm watching like a TV show like Scandal. I would way, 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 way be more likely to watch it on the ABC app or on Hulu than I would on TV because TV just destroys it. It looks totally grainy and horrible. There's there there are so many issues and so many variables when we talk about consuming media online and on television. We are in the infancy. You're watching me right now. I probably look great to you right now on on. Um, I always look great to you. I probably look great to you on your computer, but you put me up on a TV, you're going to start seeing quality loss. Why? Because yeah. I'm sending, you know, two, three megabits a second. If I sent 15, that would be a different story. Yeah. Most broadcast, you know, th there's a lot that goes into this. That's my point. And it's frustrating a a as someone that wants to be a cord cutter. Um, I notice these quality differences. But you, you don't want to suffer the quality loss issues. Yeah, I, I don't. Uh, Q1X says, I have and I don't Oregon blame you for that either. game from a satellite feed. It's 1080p, 60 frames at 86 meg megs per second. Yeah, see, that is the direct source. That's a direct feed. I would I would actually pay money. I would pay a, a, a crap ton of money so I could get a, a direct source of what this is supposed to look like. John, the things that I could see with my eyes. <laughs> I I I'm cursed with this 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 horrible problem I have where audio and video has to mean something to me. And then you got other people that are walking Wah. around like oh. yeah. And then you got like the people that stare at a screen. They're like, I don't know if it's HD or SD. They can't tell. Yeah. And it drives me crazy. I just want to take their heads and just bash it against the wall. And that would be illegal. The, the, those are people that don't watch a whole lot of anything and don't yeah. really care about what they're watching. Yeah. I mean, I just go crazy. And then, like, I, 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 I end up losing my mind at, at the quality of it, and nobody else notices it. Nobody else sees it except, you know, a few people. Yeah. You know, guys, by the way, if you're watching live, uh, go to our website, gfqlive.tv. You can watch our content there. We got a chat room. Somebody's been talking in the wrong chat room for, for about an hour now. Sorry, <laughs> man gfqlive.tv come in there change your nickname join the chat join the conversation uh, there you know this is a hot topic i'm hot now i'm hot nobody still finds that funny i'm hot i'm getting hot here uh um, yeah we get it it's not funny do, do you when do you <laughs> I, so here's a question for you john because you consume no. everything you consume a lot of online content do you notice the difference does it bother you when it's it's lower in bit rate Forget about the resolution. I but can we'll... neither comment nor deny on anything about that. Okay. Uh, so Ham... I am not typical. Ham Fishbean, beautiful name in the chat, says, remember how much more efficient H.264 is than MPEG-2 used by most providers? MLB looks very good using 720p uh, only at 30 frames per second. I think MLB has updated to... Uh, 60 frames because MLB network MLB TV is the backbone for the WWE network and they're doing 60. So I, they may have updated that or they're they've, they've changed it. MLB network actually is one of the only ones that are doing a very good job at this, but they still have the problem when it comes to bandwidth. You need to up that. You need to up the bit rate. You need to up it. Uh, John, you want to yeah. go into something else? So Walmart has their own payment system now, their mobile payment system called Walmart Paid. Uh, basically, it'll show a QR code on their terminal, and then you'll scan that using your phone to make the payment. Interesting. So when checking out, customers select Walmart Pay from within the store's mobile app, and then take a picture of a generated QR code on the point-of-sale terminal to connect. 
Within the app, an electronic receipt is stored, and Touch ID fingerprint recognition is supported for an extra layer of security. I guess what's good about their system is that it supports nearly all credit and debit cards, which is something that Apple Pay and Android Pay don't support yet. Yeah. But still, this is a very different system than what you see with Android Pay and Apple Pay, where they both use NFC, but Walmart Pay is doing it differently where you're scanning a QR code. I have a question for you. Uh, have you done any kind of NFC payment, Apple Pay? Have you used it yet? I have not, no. I have not either. And I'm I am a technical person, right? Like I'm one I, of these I, guys. I don't, that I I don't have a phone cool. that supports it. So listen, you don't oh yeah, your your phone doesn't have it, huh? Nope. Well maybe it's an maybe, iPhone five. Maybe if you're a good boy, Santa will bring <laughs> you something. <laughs> Maybe if you're only if you're a good boy, um, but uh, you know I have it on Aren't my phone. I always, you no, know, you're you're actually you're a terrible boy sometimes. <laughs> you're a terrible, terrible, rotten child. <laughs> you know what Santa's bringing you? A big lump of coal. <laughs> That's what you're getting. And an Great, iPhone. So at least I can at least I can stay warm in the basement. Then. <laughs> at least you can stay warm for once. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take it. Yeah. <laughs> I I have it on my phone. Guys, I've never used it. I've never used it. I have used you Google. You also Wa- don't go anywhere. I go a lot of places. You know what you I would buy rather everything have? on Amazon. I do buy everything on Amazon. Um, but you know what I would rather have? And people make fun of. Remember the coin? A couple of years ago, we saw this thing, the coin, and it finally started shipping it. It was like a. It's it's actually a credit card that's programmable. So you program all your credit cards into one card, and you pick which one you want to use. Mm-hmm. I. I'm the only person on this planet that still thinks this is a great idea. I don't... The likelihood that every restaurant is going to support Apple Pay or or Android Pay or whatever, Samsung Pay, um, it's rare. A lot of restaurants don't even care about this. Most most places just want to accept your credit card. So you're always... I mean, you could could check out at Macy's. If you go to, like, these big places, yeah, you're going to be able to scan it and do it. But... They Nobody's s- shopping at Macy's because they suck. But but let's bring up Macy's. Macy's, Walmart, uh, Nordstrom's. Screw uh, Macy's. Uh, Bloomingdale's, wherever. Major department stores. Yeah, they're going to be quick to integrate something like this because it's hot and people are shopping there. But you go to a restaurant, you go to an Uncle Jack Steakhouse, um, you're... You're not going to... You're not going to be able to tap and pay. It doesn't work like that. The concept behind coin, I like... Uh, Q&X Monkey says chip and coin. Guess what? We are we still chip do not have pen. that. Chip and pay. We don't have that here in the States. I broke my... Look at this. I broke chip my case. Chip and pen. Chip and pen. I broke my case. Aw. <laughs> Jeez. You know what it was? It's that stupid Oscillus Rift. Uh, cra- that, that It was that VR thing. It broke my case. Oh, I love this case. I'm very sad now. See, another reason that VR sucks. You know what? Yeah. Another reason. You know what? Screw you, Samsung. If it wasn't for you, this would not have happened. I actually, I should order a case today. Um, so that, that's, actually, that sucks. I like this case. Look at that. It's cracked right off. <laughs> now I'm sad. Go into another story, John. Uh, so finally, it's 2015 and Verizon now supports native Wi-Fi calling. Yes, it does. Uh, beginning on December 8th, two phones support native Wi-Fi calling, the Samsung Galaxy S6 and the S6 Edge. Apparently, in the beginning of 2016, early 2016, Verizon says they will begin supporting native Wi-Fi calling on the iPhone. Uh, So I have a Galaxy S6, and I have to tell you, I could could make phone calls now in this house. And and, uh, didn't we just talk about this last time we did the show, how horrible it is for me to make a phone call? Yeah, uh, my my culture. It, it's it's actually unbelievable, guys. Um, you know, I live in New York City. I'm in a suburb of New York City. But if I walk two blocks down that way, I have full four bars, and I'm able to get through LTE. I'm able to get about forty megabits a second, forty megabits down, and like thirty eight up. It's like the most insane speeds. I could walk two blocks up this way, get exactly the same thing, but for whatever reason. I think there's a giant conspiracy happening. I don't want to. Bl- I don't want to. I don't want to pick people. I don't want to blame certain type of people for this conspiracy. But there is a conspiracy preventing me 
from having having 4G access. It's 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 entirely possible. And it's the Canadians that are responsible for this problem. No, I'm, <laughs> they're not the Canadians. Yes, they are. The Canadians single handedly have destroyed my LTE. You're gonna you're gonna insult all of our Canadian viewers? No, no, no. I love the Canadian viewers. That's why I'm picking on them. Because they're they're By the nice. way, we also have so. Amazon for our Canadian viewers. If you go to gfq.co slash Amazon C A, you can get our Canadian Amazon affiliate yeah. ID. Um listen, I'm a big fan of Saskatchewan, boys and girls. I can name all the Canadian provinces. Um <laughs> So I it and it doesn't matter what service you're on. It could be T-Mobile, AT&T, Verizon, Sprint, does not matter. There is no service on this block. There is something preventing it. You do you really want to know what I, my I think theory it's about is? about time that they started supporting Wi-Fi calling. I mean, yeah. Verizon is literally the last carrier, major carrier to get Wi-Fi calling. T-Mobile's had it forever. I had it on my BlackBerry curve in 2008. Yeah. Now, Literally, almost eight years ago, I was able to do this on T-Mobile. Uh, the fact that you pronounce Saskatchewan correctly, Curtis B. says, shout out to Saskatchewan. Shout out to Edmonton. <laughs> shout out to Calgary, Alberta, Canada. Winnipeg. Let's just name Canadian places. Uh, no. So... <laughs> I I have there's no service for any any cell provider. What no, I I'm, actually I'm think in my happened. basement here for my office, and I get two bars down here. I would love Wi-Fi calling on my iPhone. At least then I'd have full service. I uh, I, I have my Wi-Fi router set up right behind me in a closet. So, if I, if I can do that, then I got good service. Um, so you want to know my conspiracy on why I, what I think happened with the uh, with the LTE? Oh, God. Here we go. Shout out to Saskatoon. Um, so a couple of years ago, New York City put this antenna up on our block, this giant antenna. And it's the way that they read the water, the, the meters now. It was, it's like a weird internal network for like the water reading. On the, they have it on like on every block now. And it sends the signal every month for this box. When they installed this thing, it killed every single... Every single uh, cell connector on this block, uh, cell service. Nobody has cell service on this block. I can walk around. It just it's, it's zero bars, zero. But now we have Wi-Fi calling, so thank God everything is better now in the world. But, but like you said, you had Wi-Fi calling in what two thousand eight. There's there's people that that are like, what do you need Wi-Fi calling for? I got perfect signal. What do you, nobody needs Wi-Fi calling. Well, then, then, then you don't need it. Then God bless you. You're, you're amazing. Yeah. You don't need it. There's plenty of people like myself and you that live in either an area that, for whatever reason, has low coverage, or you're in an office building, you're below ground, you're in a basement where there's there's little to no cell signal getting through to your phone. Wouldn't it be great if you could do Wi-Fi calling? Yes, yes, it yes, would. Yes, it would. Yeah. So now I have Wi-Fi calling, and I could, uh, you know, so far I could, I could. And it's great, you know. And it's wonderful. Um, and I did this in 2008 with a freaking BlackBerry. Yeah. I think. I mean, you know, people make fun of BlackBerry today, but you know what? In 2008, you could do Wi-Fi calling on a BlackBerry. So it's only available on Samsung devices. Uh, hopefully, the iPhone will be uh, next on this list of products that have I'm, I'm Wi-Fi hoping calling. like very early 2016, like January or February. Yeah, I really hope so. Yeah, because if they have it supporting on Android devices, I think all it takes is is a is a software update from Apple to enable it. I think, but it, it's available on AT and T. Yeah, you can do it on AT and T. You can do it on Sprint, and you can do it on T Mobile natively right now. Verizon is literally the last carrier to support native Wi Fi calling. Yeah. Well, thank well, thank God for that, Verizon. Um, I have a question for you. Another one. Yeah, I have, I have a question. So you've been researching a lot of these plans, right? These these uh, these phone plans. Uh, to a degree, yeah. So. How does it work with Verizon's plan? If like right now I got my phone, I believe I got it like in April or, or March. Uh when can I just trade this in and get another one? Are you do doing device payments? 
Because I, as far as I've understood it right now, is that, um, they only have one plan, which is you 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 either pay device payments or you do the contract stuff or you pay outright. That's the only way you can pay for stuff on Verizon. And as far as I know, there is not an upgrade plan for Android devices. The only upgrade plan, early upgrade plan that they have, are for iPhone devices. If you're paying device payments. Okay, so let me see. I'm in my account right now. Um, holiday savings. Let's see. Trade in your phone and get a hundred. No, thank you. I don't want to trade in anything. Uh, I've used. Wow, I actually used a lot of. Uh, I've used four gigs already for the month. Wow, my ten. You use more than me. Yeah, I used four gigs out of my my ten, my devices. Here we go. Well, yeah, as far as I know, there is no early upgrades for Android devices. Only iPhone devices. Wait a minute. If, and that's going forward from from the iPhone 6s. I believe I. View device agreement. I do have a upgrade on my phone. I could upgrade my phone right now if I wanted to. Cool. Yeah, because it it what they do they finance it right. It's so other, yeah. This it's, is it's, it's, they yeah. they still you still pay for the full retail cost of the device. They just spread it out over twenty four months. Over twenty four months. So, yeah. so if you're you're buying a, an iPhone for eight forty nine. You're you're paying about thirty five dollars per month. Yeah. So right now, let me see mine. Uh, let me see my phone. Uh, I'm eligible for an upgrade on my phone because what I had done initially when I got my phone, I used my father's upgrade on my phone. You following? Right. So they moved the yeah. upgrade. So my phone shows that I, I have no upgrade. You know, like I'm eligible for an upgrade. But for my father, even though he's on an iPhone uh, 4S, it says that he's not uh, eligible for an upgrade because the upgrade was done on my on his plan. Um, right. But really, they swapped it and stole his because I swapped it and I stole his. Yeah. Um, I wonder if I should. So are you, you're looking to get the the iPhone. You don't want to wait. You don't want to wait for the next iPhone. You want to get the 6S Plus. Well, if you're doing device payments, you can upgrade in as little as six months. As long as you've, as long as you have been making payments for six months, yeah, and pay at least fifty percent of the cost of the iPhone, you can upgrade. Okay, so you got to pay half the ver half the value, and then you're eligible yes. for the upgrade at any time. See, I'm looking here. Is this half the upgrade? I'm. I'm. This is fascinating, actually. Yeah, so if you pay like three seventy five, you can upgrade in six okay. months. So Jess has an iPhone six, uh, sixty four gig. No, she doesn't have a sixty four gig. Oh yeah, she does. Yeah, yeah, yeah she does. Because when I got it, because she there was no thirty two. Um, but that, that's that's only going based on the six S. You okay. cannot do this with any other model at this time because they just introduced. Oh, they just introduced it beginning it, okay. of the six S. Okay, this device was purchased under a device payment agreement. This agreement allows you to pay allows you to upgrade after paying seventy five percent of the total amount at the time. So upgrade, uh, upgrade by making your qualifying payment. So I qualify for an upgrade if I pay them two hundred and fifty dollars right now. I qualify for an upgrade. Yes. The financed amount is $750. The remaining balance is 437 on this phone. It is bonkers that this phone is a... F you know what I mean? You don't think it's crazy? I think it's it crazy. The, these prices are made up, boys and girls. Totally made up. This is how they get you. This is it. And then they take away our taste buds and all we're eating is gruel. Every day, and then we're locked in to some some device. If you wanted a two year contract, it'd be like four hundred and fifty dollars. Yeah. Listen, everybody, just that, that's the subsidized contract two year price, and you cannot upgrade that phone whatsoever. Yeah. For two years, you so, would be locked into two two years before you can upgrade that line. Yeah, the the regular price for these phones are just bonkers. I actually, I have probably realized that I could probably downgrade my uh, my data usage. I have I pay for ten gigs, but I use less than four. I just did that. I uh, I switched over to the the new Verizon plan, and I changed my data payments, and I'm now saving like twenty five dollars a month. Yeah, I could probably I could probably drop this. Well, I'm I'm paying for ten gigs, but I'm using nothing. 
Yeah, you should lower it. Have you used you can save details. at least fifteen bucks. Yeah. So I use the most. Actually, let's see who uses the most. This is interesting. Uh, I, I actually looked at going Android because there's some fantastic Android phones out there that are so much cheaper, such as the uh, the new Nexus 6P and the OnePlus 2. Both are really nice-looking Android devices out there. Yeah. Unfortunately, I don't think either one of them works with Verizon. So I apparently use the most data, and I'm shocked. You know why? Because I traveled. That's why. I use 2.6 gigs uh, of data. This is great. I use 2.6 gigs of data. My father used 0 0.009 gigs of data. Mm -hmm. Jess uses not even one gig. How is that possible? Oh, because she's probably always connected to Wi-Fi. Yeah. That's, that's what I do. I have, yeah. on average, I use about 1.5 gigabytes per month. On average, on average, yeah. So my monthly but estimated bill. I'm always bill, connected to Wi-Fi, so. Actually, I do get a really good discount on this. Um, my bill is supposed to be 144. It's supposed to be 210, but I get uh, a discount to 144. Right? Data. Mm -hmm. I'm paying 64 gigs a month for 80 gigs. That's not bad uh, for 10 gigs. I'm paying 64 dollars instead of 80 dollars. Is that bad or good? I don't know. <laughs> I suppose it's good. I mean, everybody has different circumstances. I know. I maybe. I I think I broke something here. They 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 have a thing when you go and look at changing to the Verizon plan. It'll actually calculate your savings. Okay. Yeah. So here you go. So I'm looking here. I, I would be saving thirty dollars a month if I dropped it down to six gigs. That, that That's would be a significant savings. That is a significant savings. If I drop it down to six gigs, and, and in all honesty, it, you could still come out ahead paying overages if you went over your data. Yeah, because you're not paying as every single month for for that overage, basically. Yeah, you'd only be paying for the for the one month that you had the overage, which is the way I'm looking at it. Is is that I went from four gigabytes per month to three gigabytes. And there's only one month in the past six months where I went even close to actually, three Actually, no, 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 no. I would not be saving. I'm only saving. I'm actually saving. Wow, this is crazy. Because of the promotion that I have and the discount that I get for 10 gigs, um, it's $64. But if I dropped it down to six gigs, it's, it's uh, $56. So I'm actually, it's $11 more and I'm getting all that data, you know? So you're really... You know what? If I finagle this, I could probably save a couple bucks here and there, about twenty bucks. Yeah, you know. But I drop. I also dropped the um, the insurance, the carrier insurance that I had on two phones. Which, by the way, that's a scam because if you're leasing these phones, guess what? They have to replace it. On a lot of these new phones, it's now worked in. Like through Apple, if you get if you get the phone through Apple, through for their plan, whatever their monthly plan is. If you do it through Apple, it comes with Apple Care Plus. It comes with Apple Care period. Plus. Yeah. Period. So you're better off just getting it through Apple. Interesting. I mean, you still you you end up paying more through Apple for because they add a hundred dollars or one hundred and twenty nine dollars for the Apple Care Plus onto the the cost of the iPhone. Okay. Whereas if you went with the carrier, you're not and you you could elect to not have Apple Care Plus for one hundred twenty nine dollars, and end up over the course of that phone saving one hundred twenty nine dollars. I'm so upset I broke my case. <laughs> All right, John, let's wrap it up. What do you say? Yep. Go to our website, jfknetwork.com. Subscribe to us wherever our podcasts are available. That was fun. I had a lot of fun just ranting and raving with you. Yep. Hey, guys, yeah. also on our website, we have two lists under our featured post. One's for um, like computers and electronics, and another post is for podcast gear. If you're into any of that sort of stuff, you're looking for some Christmas stuff to get, some podcast gear or some electronics. We have a list of recommendations that you can get of stuff to get on Amazon. Yeah, very good list that John made. Uh, go there, gfknetwork.com. Follow me on Twitter at Andrew Zarin. You can follow John at Suncast. Remember, use our Amazon link. When you're buying something on Amazon, use our link, gfq.co slash Amazon bookmark it. Whenever you make a purchase during the holiday season, 
we got a small little credit and it helps us out because we have to add another camera here to the studio. So uh, it's you guys that are buying that. All right, guys, that's it for this week. Bye-bye for now.